Now let's see how we can uh, debug processes and threads, which is a really important concept in, in kernel mode, in, both in kernel mode and user mode. By using the dot process command, you will know the current process that currently is executing into, into your system, or it shows the current process that uh, its CR3 register is uh, currently mapped and uh, the process layout, this uh, process layout is valid into our current debugging context. There's also another command called uh, dot thread. This command is used to show the current uh, thread information, the current thread that is running to the system. It also shows the e-process structure for the current uh, process and uh, e-thread structure for the current thread along with it uh, along with a 16 bytes process uh, if you want to uh, see the list of uh, processes uh, you can use that process list using this command needs your symbols files to be configured because hyperdvg otherwise don't know how to search for their process names and uh, pr process details so before using the uh, using this uh, command you should make sure that your symbol server is set and it shows both the kernel uh, cr3 uh, register aligned with image name process id and the structure of the e process uh, as you can see here if you want to just uh, see uh, the threads for a special process then we can use that thread list and after that we could specify its uh, e-process address for example in this example i i just want to see the uh, thread list uh, threads list for uh, process uh, like microsoft edge process uh, which its uh, e-process is located here so i use this uh, after uh, the process uh, parameter to the dot thread command. We will, we will see some examples about uh, these uh, commands later in this uh, part. And the, the result will be a, a list of threads with uh, their e thread structure aligned with the process ID dot uh, thread ID. So, so E08 is the process ID for this uh, Microsoft Edge process. And this 1918 uh, is also the thread ID for this uh, specific thread. And now, also other ways that HyperDVG can switch to uh, another process or another thread uh, memory layout, and uh, will, it will change the context of the debugger. For example, if we want to switch to a new process uh, and we want to see its registers, its uh, memory addresses, uh, we should provide its uh, process ID or uh, uh, e-process structure. Both of them are possible. So in this case, uh, I used that process plus PID and I specified the uh, process ID in hexadecimal format and, and pass it to the KHyperDVG. After that, we should uh, continue the debugger. So next time uh, the debugger sees this process, then it will break and give the control to the uh, debugger. Uh, the debug the, the debuggy will be halted again. Uh, and also, if you want to just switch to a specific to a specific thread, uh, then you should uh, specify its e thread address and the use that thread command and provide the address to the e thread of the target. Uh, there are also other <laughs> commands uh, one, uh, for uh, grabbing the access to the processes. The, uh, like uh, you could use the, both that process command or uh, that process two commands. Uh, we, will, we will see some examples of, uh, for these commands. Uh, the first command uh, uses the clock interrupt to intercept uh, the process. And the second command uses the changes of uh, CR3 register to in intercept the process changes. So generally speaking, whenever the time slice for a, a special uh, process is finished, then uh, 
a clock interrupt will be the, the operating system configures the processor to throw some clock interrupts and uh, get the execution back and uh, it will give the execution back to the operating system so operating system can perform context switches can perform other tasks but uh, this is where hyper dvg notif uh, get notified about the process change and will intercept and halt the system and give the con control of the debugger to the debugger so this is how that process command work uh, but another scenario if uh, if you want to use that process too then uh, whenever the windows wants to change the memory layout to a new memory layout or to a new process uh, memory layout then it changed the cr3 register and hyper dvg tries to intercept all of the changes to this cr3 register and uh, if uh, this change and uh, hyper dvg intercept these changes then it, it will interpret it as the windows is trying to change the process so uh, the, the uh, basic principles of implementation are not important if you just want to know when to use that process or when to use that process too uh, in most of the cases that process is a better option because uh, we could use that process uh, to uh, sometimes uh, intercept the execution in the user mode while the second one is not possible uh, the changing cr3 is always done in the kernel so we cannot uh, uh, intercept the uh, execution in uh, user mode uh, with uh, that process too but it's possible by using that process command uh, so if you want to just intercept it in user mode you should use that process and if you want to see and modify the context uh, by context, I mean the registers, the memory layout, the state of the system, of the thread the, in the user mode or directly in the kernel mode. Again, you should uh, uh, use uh, that process. And this is, uh, it's also possible to step through the instruction because uh, we will be notified in the middle of execution of the uh, process. So we have a chance to uh, step through the instructions directly in the context of the target process for that process too if uh, for example the process is waiting for a context switch the process is waiting for an object so the process is simply uh, the operating system don't assign any timing slice to the to that specific process uh, then uh, the first command probably won't work uh, but most of the time uh, the second command works so in most of the cases if uh, you you couldn't catch the execution by using that process command then another option is using that process to command and another scenario is where you want to get notified before the process uh, finds a chance to get executed uh, for example the, the first command <coughs> or uh, the that process command gets the execution after one time slice so the process will find a chance to execute one time for one time slice and after that uh yeah it might the, the process might be intercepted by a clock interrupt but that process to guarantees that when you uh, like execute this uh, that process to command uh, then uh, before uh, the program get, gets the chance to get executed then you will intercept it so this is a, a, a little bit tricky sometimes you need to use that process and sometimes you need to use that process too <clears throat> also the same thing uh, happens to that thread there is also there is one dot thread command and uh, one dot thread two command uh, that thread uh, command uh, works the same as uh, that process command. It uses the clock int uh, interrupt in the same way. <clears throat> but uh, that thread two command uh, uses <clears throat> actually <clears throat> intercept accesses to this GS uh, 188 uh, address like if if windows wants to change some threads then uh, the windows will update this location 
so hyper dbg tries to intercepts any writes and this address and if there's any write on this address then the hyper dbg interpret it as a uh, thread change and will check whether or a specific thread is present or not so there are some scenarios uh, where you can use that thread uh, for example if you want to debug only one thread uh, and you have multiple threads and you only want to debug one of them then you should use that thread instead of that thread too and if you're going to halt the debug when the thread is for example in user mode in kernel mode in the middle of its execution then you should use that thread uh, this is not possible by using that thread too. Of course, the actual context is visible. Uh, I, by context, again, I mean registers and memory. Uh, the actual context is uh, are visible by using that thread command. Uh, while uh, that thread two command, uh, the actual context is not uh, visible. You have to step some instructions to. Uh, again perform the context switching and reach again to the actual target and if you want to step through the instructions directly again you should use that thread command and if the thread is halted and a deadlock happens uh, in, in, in when you want to just debug some deadlocks in your target application uh, again you should use that thread command that thread 2 is not usable in general in only and only if you uh, couldn't get a chance to get the thread execution by using the first method then you can try the second one so it's highly recommended to use the dot thread uh, command uh, instead of dot thread 2